I'm Jim Longworth, and welcome to another edition of Forsyth County Connections, coming to you once again from the uh, Government Center in downtown Winston-Salem. I'm so glad you could join us for this half hour, and I hope you'll stay with us throughout the program because we have some great guests and some important information coming your way. And where we want to start is talking about environmental assistance and protection with a gentleman that knows all about it. Our first guest is Minor Barnett. He's Forsyth County Director of Environmental Assistance and Protection. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, I understand that Forsyth County has a pretty special relationship with the state and the EPA when it comes to regulating air quality, for example. What, what does it mean, a special relationship? So we have um, very close professional um, relationships and daily interactions with um, staff at Region 4 with the e EPA or the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and right. also with the North Carolina Division of Air Quality within the state's Department of Environmental Quality. You know, we're all working um, towards the same goals, so we share information and ideas um, as we work to protect air quality to benefit all the citizens and visitors in North Carolina. Now, I know there are businesses that pollute. Sometimes they mean to, sometimes they don't. We won't go into any specifics, but it, it you know, you really have to, I really admire what you do in your office because you're keeping tabs and things. But what kind of businesses are regulated in general? Not any specific names, but types of businesses. So we regulate facilities that have industrial processes that create air pollution and are subject to the um, provisions of the Clean Air Act to limit their air pollution emissions. Is there enforcement? I mean, what can you do? I mean, if you, and again, maybe somebody didn't know that they're polluting. Maybe they didn't know they're in violation, but do you give somebody a second chance or how do you determine whether you should take action against the company? So we use a compliance assistance approach to our enforcement responsibilities to help all facilities that are subject to regulatory oversight understand what their requirements are and the uh, limitations are that they have to maintain compliance with. A lot of facilities are required to have a permit before they um, construct their um, facility and begin operation and we work with them from the beginning of the application process um, until the time that they're up and running and then we help them achieve and maintain compliance once they're in operation. Now we throw terms around like the feds or the EPA or whatever in the state and actually what sets you apart is that you pretty much administer what you're doing locally, right? We do. We are, um, we have our authority to operate as a local environmental enforcement agency is delegated from the EPA through the North Carolina Environmental Management Commission. And we have our local air quality technical code that is very similar and mirrors the state um, air quality regulations. And we inspect facilities, we review their emissions inventories, make sure they comply with their reporting requirements. That's a lot of responsibility just on a regular day, but let's talk about an irregular day. The recent fire uh, in recent memory, that, of course, that, that dealt with the fertilizer plant in downtown Winston-Salem, which could have been a disaster had an explosion occurred, but the fire got out of control. Uh, how did you interface with EPA and, and others for that? So we started communicating um, the morning after the fire started, first with the, the state division of air quality and then with EPA's um, emergency response team. So they arrived about 24 hours after the fire started and mobilized some um, temporary enhanced air monitoring equipment around the one mile perimeter. Which, and, was, which was crucial because you had people, residences, businesses, whatever, and, and you didn't know if something toxic was gonna come out in the air. So what you were doing really crucial. Right, and you know, a big fire like that creates a lot of smoke and we were um, working together to make sure we knew which areas were being impacted at different times as the wind direction was sh shifting throughout the week yeah. and to try to make sure that the people knew um, they needed to try to avoid breathing that smoke. Absolutely, and I appreciate what you do. Before time runs out, and I don't want, maybe we can get you back if you get some time. We, there's so many other things I want to get into, but one thing I don't want to forget, what if somebody thinks they should report an air quality violation or something? Is there a website or a phone number or something? Yes, they can, they can call us at our office number at 336-703-2440, or they can go onto our website at forsyth.cc slash EAT for environmental assistance and protection. 
Binder, I appreciate it again. I appreciate everything you do, working 24-7, uh, 365, to make sure the air quality is safe for us. Thanks for everything. Yeah, thank you. It's a All pleasure. Right. We'll be right back after this. Unlike other health concerns, mental illness is not always easy to see. D E P R. Mental illness doesn't show up on a scale. Bipolar? Sorting out a mental health concern takes professional diagnosis and treatment. Anxiety. I thought so. If you or a loved one has a mental health concern, don't go it alone. For 24-hour free and confidential information and treatment referral, call 1-800-662-HELP. Learn more at samhsa.gov support. Back now on the Forsyth County Connections, and uh, some of you have seen various types of county commissioner meetings on uh, cable and television to watch, and some of you have attended these meetings in person. And we thought we'd just spend a few minutes to go over what happens in some of these, especially what's coming up with a special work session. And there's one man we can count on to help us with that, Dudley Watts, of course, county manager. Good to have you back. Right, thank you, Jim. Yeah, glad to be here. Uh, you said that uh, now people will be watching this show at different times, but our first broadcast will hit probably this weekend. Uh, and so this is ahead of a work session. What do you mean a work session? Yeah, so the board of commissioners have a strategic calendar. And so, you know, after they finish out the budget in June, uh, most years, um, there's a little bit of time we get the budget kind of implemented. In the fall, we start um, uh, at the staff level, really working with departments to put together a, a strategic plan. And that strategic plan um, is actually presented to the board at their winter work session, which is usually in late February. Uh, and the winter work session has uh, that information in it. And then um, we give them, you know, that we share financial information and really try to put the challenges for the coming year in context for the board. Of course, you never know, like in, you know, in 2019, who would have known the pandemic was coming? Right. You never know everything because you don't have a crystal ball, I don't think. Right. Although sometimes I think you do. Uh, but uh, now, uh, since monies and things are being allocated and involved, that really should be of interest to everybody in the county, shouldn't it? It, it is. And so the board goes into a session at about, uh, you know, in the morning, they, they do a, a half day session that leads into a regular briefing session and meeting. Um, but they, they, that is one place where they sit down and really look at, you know, what's going to happen in the next 12 months. How do we position ourselves? Uh, in a way that we can be uh, successful going into that? What are the budgetary implications? What are the issues that are out there? So that'll start next Thursday, the 24th. So this will air a few days before that. But on the 24th, we'll be in that session, 8.30, 9 o'clock, Thursday morning, probably be in it through, uh, through noon. And it'll just have a variety of topics about you know, budget, um, uh, state uh, appropriations, state impacts on our operations, um, federal, ARPA dollar, funding, federal, federal dollars, dollars, ARPA dollars will be in that too. Yeah, because there's still a lot of the ARPA dollars, as we found out on this program, that are still available. So I imagine people, a lot of people in organizations are going to want to make their case before you, right? Um, they, they do. Uh, that won't happen at that session. Um, we have a public session at every formal meeting, which is every other Thursday, um, where citizens can come in uh, and they can, they have three minutes and they can uh, say, uh, share any information they want as long as they are not out of order. Right. Uh, but um, but that is this, you know, this is really the people's chambers and uh, that's an opportunity that the board leaves open for them to be to address. Them. Now we see the big monitor behind us and it reminds me to ask you that uh, there are some folks that maybe don't realize that they can catch the, the public meetings on TV, right? Uh, they can, so they can view them uh, live on channel 13. They're also streamed. Uh, and then they are all archived. So you can go into our website at www.forsyth.cc. Right. Uh, and you can um, you can watch uh, any meeting the commissioners have. And so it is all everything that goes on in those formal meetings and in the briefing sessions uh, and in the work sh special sessions they can see you on that side. Now, in, in, in the sense of trans, you know, in the fairness and transparency, you say you know, the public can come to cer certain things and they don't come to others things that are closed off like certain work sessions or whatever, how am I going to know what's been discussed in there? I mean, so when the, when, um, when a quorum of board members is present, um, it is a public meeting. And so they are cautious um, all the time about 
being in a group that constitutes a quorum. So all their meetings are public, except for occasionally you'll see us go into closed session. And those are, there are very prescriptive rules around when you can go in a closed session and when you can't. Like a personnel decision of a... Personnel, um, we can go into closed, we, we periodically go into closed session if we're trying to acquire property. If we're selling property, you cannot talk about selling property in closed session, but right. you can uh, do that. You know, some uh, lawsuits have, you know, if we're in the middle of a lawsuit and something uh, that, um, that, that might jeopardize that, the, the attorney-client privilege uh, it does yeah. exist, but it's pretty narrow. But everything else is, is gets out there for the public as long as you have the quorum. That's fascinating stuff, and I, and I hope more people will not only watch this show, but especially watch uh, the county commissioners' uh, meetings and things, and the nuts and bolts that you're involved in make a big difference and have an impact on everybody's lives, which was really the impetus behind you wanting to do this show, this series, is to let people know that 24-7, 365, Folks are working on behalf of the, the county residents. Absolutely, and our effort is to be as transparent as possible, and we hope we achieve that. Appreciate it, Doug. Thanks a lot. We'll be right back after this. Performing on stage takes mental and physical preparation. But one thing I never thought to prepare for was cervical cancer. 91% of cervical cancers are caused by the human papillomavirus, or HPV. The good news is there are vaccines that can protect you or your children from cancer. I survived my cancer, but you can stop cancer before it starts. Talk to your doctor and go to thinkaboutthelink.org to learn more. Back now on the Forsyth County Connection. So glad you could stay with us. We have a very special guest with us right now. It's going to talk about a partnership and about permits and all sorts of interesting things. With me right now is Tracy Phillips, Chief Building Official for the City of Winston-Salem. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, building inspections are done in cooperation between the city and county, and not everything is. A lot of things are separate. But this is done in cooperation. There's a partnership. Now, how does that work? Well, the, our inspections department, which is part of the Planning and Development Services, we are a city-county agency responsible for review and inspecting of building and zoning related activities throughout Forsyth County, except the, the town of Kernersville. Except the town of, so the town of Kernersville, where I live, is a, well, I, we'll have to do a whole other show on that about why my, why my town is different. Uh, but now, is, is a, you don't have to get all the examples, but when do we know if a building permit is actually required? And we're talking about residential stuff. We'll get you back some other time talking about commercial. But just for residences and stuff, how do I know basically when a building permit's gonna be required? Okay, the, the building permits are based on if you're changing, if you're adding to uh, repairing or replacing load bearing structural issues, such as walls, decks, or if you've got a project that costs more than $15,000, and I'll expand on that too. Uh, that's what pulls in a building permit. Now, if you're doing cosmetics, changing your doors in your house, changing, putting in replacement windows. And that's okay. Anything cosmetic, you you probably do not have to have a permit for that unless the project is over $15,000. That's what we'll pull that in. Over 15000 That's a good threshold to think about. Now, if I'm doing my own thing here with this, I mean, can I pull my own permit and take care of all that or what? Yes, if you're a homeowner, there's an affidavit that we have that we have, and it is per trade. Um, you you have to own the home, you have to reside in the home, you have to to do the own your own work. You can't hire a contractor and do it while you pull the permit. And after the permit is complete, inspections are done. It's one year after that. You can't sell it. You can't rent it. You still have to maintain possession and live in that home for a full year after completion. Okay. Now, what risk do I run if I don't get a building permit when one is required? Now, now I'm not saying somebody's trying to cheat or, or do things wrong, but just maybe didn't know. I mean, what, what can happen? Uh, it could get costly. You could have building structural issues. You could have electrical shock hazards, inadequate heating. Uh, just had that the other day with some ducks that someone called and they didn't get a permit for. Uh, inadequate plumbing, but we would have to get contractors involved, and that's going to cost the homeowner to come in. If there's any corrections, they would have to get contractor involved to get us a permit. Right. And then for any corrections, 
that's what we would need. Now, uh, it, it seems like everything is online these days. I'm kind of old fashioned, like to do things in person, but it seems like a lot of stuff's online. Permitting and submitting things, and I mean, can can you handle a lot of stuff online? Is that the way to go with this kind of thing? Yes, and this was, everything is submitted online, building-wise. Uh, and this was in the works before COVID. When COVID hit, you know, we all went, everybody went home. Work didn't stop. Right. So we had to switch over and do everything submitted online. So, yes, the building permits are submitted online with the site plan and the plans itself. Now, we didn't rehearse this or anything, but if I do have a question about something, uh, you know, you and I were talking off camera about, hey, I'm going to go to a home improvement place and get me a standalone little outbuilding and that kind of thing. And then I start getting a feeling, you know, pit in my stomach. And I'm, maybe I'm watching this show here. I say, you know what? I better, I better check with Tracy and his folks to see if I need a building permit. Now, is there a particular website or portal or phone number or anything people should know? Yes, you can go online to the city's website, inspectnet.org, or you can look online or, or even call the office at uh, 727-2624. Right, three, three, say, I'm going to write that down as you say it. 727? 2624. Okay. 336 in front of that. Okay. And you can just, there's, you can just ask a question. Um, the resources that we use are 2018 appropriate code books for, for North Carolina. That's been adopted by North Carolina. And also about the building and electrical and plumbing permits that, that we mentioned before, those can be found on the, the general statutes, North Carolina general statutes, 160D. Uh, 11 10. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Tracy, uh, lots of good information. Will you come back sometime and we'll sure. talk about some other types of permits and stuff? Yeah. Good deal. We'll be right back after this. This is what too much sounds like. This is what stress feels like. And this is what help feels like. If you've lost a job, worry about your next meal, or have trouble making it through the day, we can help. Text STRESS to 211211 to find a solution. Hi right now for Scythe County Connections. So glad you could stay with us. And our special guest now comes to us from just down the street, as we say, at the Public Library. What a great facility it is. And our guest is Shannon Page, Manager of Outreach, Diversity, and Inclusion for Fife County Public Library. Good to see you. Good to be here. Thank you, Jim. What is the Public Library's Literacy Station all about? You sent me an email that said Literacy Station. What does that mean? So Literacy Stations aren't new, but they are modular ways that you can interact with literacy materials. So for us as a library, um, that basically means that we're promoting literacy in our communities. And as a way to do that, we have offered this opportunities to small businesses within local communities here in Forsyth County. Now, why was the decision made to offer this service? Obviously, the, somebody thought you or somebody thought there was a, a great need for it. Uh, well, with the onset of the pandemic, it seemed like a really good opportunity for us to still stay engaged with our customers, um, even though we were limiting hours um, and the number of people uh, up to capacity in our buildings, this still provided an opportunity for them to engage with the materials if they weren't able to get to one of our uh, 10 locations. Give me a couple examples of what uh, comes with a literacy station if I go to one. So a literacy station is uh, instituted in a small business within Forsyth County. Um, it comes with a bookshelf. It comes with some of our discarded materials. It also comes with acrylic signage that, it, that stipulates that it's a literacy station. And it comes with some organizing materials so it can stay nice and neat. It also comes with some of our outreach um, employees going around to maintenance it period. Yeah, I was getting ready to say, because you, you use the phrase nice and neat. Who is somebody on your staff maintain these stations or Absolutely. What? So um, we have an agreement with the local business owners. Um, we rotate through um, check-in every one to two weeks just to see how it's going because it is, um, we do advertise free, I mean, read, browse, read while you wait. Um, so the materials may walk off, they may never come back, but that's okay, we'll bring more. Um, we have plenty. Yeah, so we, we so, share it. So I walk off with one. You're not going to come to my house. No, I am not. Well, you can come to my house if you want to. But that has nothing to do with. <laughs> yeah, we no. understand that. Uh, you know, while they're getting their local business service, they may want to continue to read, and that's perfectly fine. We encourage it. So if I have a local business uh, in uh, the county, 
how do I go about getting in touch with you and say, hey, you know, I'd like to have a literacy station here. I mean, what, what all is involved in doing that? Um, so basically, you would reach out to me um, at the Forsyth County Public Library. Um, we do have plans to implement more. Um, right now, we're in a testing phase, so we want to see how much we can do, how many stations we can manage. Um, but ultimately, they reach out, get on our interest list, and we'll, we'll take it from there. Right. Is it a, an involved, long involved, difficult process to go through if I want to try to apply to have one put at my business? It's not as involved as it was initially. Now that we've got a few up and running, we've worked out a few of the kinks. So it's, it, sh it should be a pretty seamless process when we do move towards expanding. Now, we didn't rehearse this or anything, but I'm curious, mm -hmm. the first time you and I met, what is gratifying or most gratifying to you about the work that you do for the library? Ooh, what is most gratifying for me? Um, I'm just, you know, in awe of people who are interested in lifelong learning opportunities and still frequent the library. I'm a lifelong learner. I've been in libraries for several years now. I've grown up reading. Um, some of my most fun moments and memories surround books. So just seeing people still being interested, and it's just not my own age demographic, and seeing younger kids and even intergenerational um, older uh, older users being um, interested in still participating with libraries is, is really fun for me. So this is essentially why I do I it. I can tell you really love it. You make things relevant for people, and uh, I just think that's great. Is there a website or something you want to give a plug for Absolutely. that people can find out more information? You can find out more about the Forsyth County Public Library by visiting ForsythLibrary.org. All right. Shannon, I appreciate you dropping by. Thank you for having me. It you came that long distance from the library oh, to the government yeah. center. It was so long. <laughs> the traffic is crazy. Yeah, thanks for doing that. All right, we'll be right back after this. Unlike other health concerns, mental illness is not always easy to see. D E P R. Mental illness doesn't show up on a scale. Bipolar? Sorting out a mental health concern takes professional diagnosis and treatment. Anxiety. I thought so. If you or a loved one has a mental health concern, don't go it alone. For 24-hour free and confidential information and treatment referral, call 1-800-662-HELP. Learn more at samhsa.gov support. Every year, 4.5 million young adults between the ages of 18 and 24 visit the ER. It's every parent's nightmare. Umergency gives you all the tools you need to quickly and effectively manage your family's emergency. Umergency provides instant access to vital resources customized to your student's campus and local community, digital consent form, and built-in urgent alert button. Umergency gives you peace of mind when you need it most. Download your Umergency app now. Back now on Forsyth County Connections, and there's some exciting stuff going on for the kids and their families and things that are being built for them, and we're going to tell you all about that with our special guest. With me now is Damon Sanders Pratt, Deputy Manager for Forsyth County. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to be here. Uh, born in Bronx and through California, and you've been all over the world, but we're glad you're here. That's right. Uh, now, by now, most folks know that SciWorks is now called Clydium, and it's a great place for kids, as I mentioned, but there's a there's a there's this public private partnership component to it that maybe a lot of folks don't know about. How so? So there are a number of ways that we're uh, partnering with not just Clydium, where Clydium uh, normally operates a museum in a building that they lease from the county for a dollar a year uh, to provide education and science for young people. For this construction project, uh, they are contributing ten million dollars toward the forty million dollar overall project. The county's doing the building and SciWorks is spending $10 million on exhibits. Uh, then the city has also collaborated with us on this project where they have uh, allowed the county to rent the Liberty Plaza, which is, used to be an attraction, turned into a hindrance, and they've given us $2 million to turn it back into an attraction again. Uh -huh. So that's part of the project as well. And then uh, Collidium will connect to the Strollway, which connects to their new Marshall Park project that the city will be working on, which will connect to Trade Street and extend the Strollway. So, there's a lot of collaborations involved. We're going to be talking about a lot of great uh, accessibility for kids and families, aren't we? We are. We are. And the location of this current facility, uh, being right downtown, uh, will allow people to wander by and, and wonder what it is and walk in the doors and, and learn something that they wouldn't have seen before. Yeah. Whereas currently, although a wonderful facility, 
uh, the current location is uh, not a destination that you just wander by. You it's sort, of, it's sort of off the beaten path. You have to know exactly where it is to go, and they get great turnout, and it's great. As you said, it's a great facility, but this the new place will be great. Um, any specifics on the exact location, number of floors, square footage? What are some of the, uh, the details of, uh, that we want to know about? Sure. So it will be located on 3rd Street and the old sheriff's office building uh, in between Liberty and Town Run Lane where the post office is downtown. Uh, it will be uh, five stories. Uh, and the interesting note is between the uh, third and fourth stories is actually exhibit space outdoors that uh, people can experience using the building. Uh, there'll be a wonderful views of uh, Fourth Street, uh, as well as uh, looking back at downtown Winston-Salem. Uh, so we're, we're looking forward to uh, this completing and people having access to it again. Quite a show place uh, that, that we're getting ready for. Now, which firms are handling the design and construction? So uh, Gensler, a uh, firm out of uh, Raleigh, the branch that we're using, but their uh, home office is in San Francisco. And then locally, their uh, you know, eyes on the project, Stitch Design Shop here in town. Is there a deadline that, I mean, nothing's certain in life, you know, but you try to shoot for certain deadlines and finishing and, and getting ready and opening. You know, what's, your, what's the projection for when this is all going to be ready for folks to come in and out of? Sure. So something of a moving target. However, uh, right now it looks like November of 2023 will be the conclusion of the construction of the building. And then another four months later, in the first quarter of 2024, it will actually open to the public when uh, Cyworks or Collidium has a chance to uh, include their exhibits and open up. Yeah, I know you're, you're excited about this personally, and we've had emails going back and forth between us. I mean, you really believe this is a, this is a good investment for the county. This is good, even for people that haven't been to Cyworks, or maybe they won't be one of the first in line to go to the, first, the, the new uh, facility. Maybe they'll say, hey, I don't have any kids. Why do I care? But it's, it's good for everybody, isn't it? It is, and I think it also activates that part of downtown Winston-Salem. Uh, Winston sort of being the heart of, of Forsyth County, the largest municipality here. And Fourth Street's one of their uh, premium thoroughfares and connecting to Trey Street and things that have changed at Mercer Plaza, also connecting to Liberty Street and kind of the government district. So we feel like this project will, will add some energy to that area. Right. And, and like you were saying earlier, there going to be so many great exhibits that, and it's kind of like a destination thing where you come in and, and you see it, you walk by it. I think people are going to be really uh, amazed at some of the exhibits and things they can see. People of all ages are going to like this. Uh, so anyway, uh, I want to thank you for, for doing this. And as we close out the program, I want to remind folks that they can, uh, as you're seeing behind us, connect with .forsythcountync.gov if you want some general information. But if people want to find out about uh, Collidium or anything, is there any other way they can get some information? So they can go to uh, Collidium's website. Uh, or they could just uh, contact Forsyth County if you're interested in the project and look at the county's website as well. Okay. I really appreciate this, Damon. Thanks for all you do. Thank you. All right. We'll see you next week.